Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, FT8 is calling. <laughs> Not really, but there is a new program out there, a new mode that people are playing with, an experimental mode called FT8 Call. That's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, it's, uh, it's an interesting evolution of the FT8 protocol. And it's a shining example of where open source, the philosophy behind open source really works. Uh, the idea behind open source is that the source code is published and anybody can modify it, make changes, um, improvements, and so on. Uh, so, um, WSJTX, uh, which is the weak signal modes program that many of you are, most of you should be familiar with, uh, has a mode called FT8. Now, WSJTX is open source. And a few people, um, I only know one of the names, Jordan Shearer, KN4CRD, is one of the guys that's involved, took WSJTX and they took the FT8 code out of it and built a, a new interface around it to facilitate communications, actually sending text messages back and forth between stations being the primary function. And we'll get to that in a second, but real quick, for those of you not familiar with FT8, uh, a real quick recap. Um, the WSJTX program introduced things like uh, JT9 and JT65 for weak signal communications uh, quite a while back. And the way that those modes work is uh, they send an extended transmission with a very redundant and repeating um, digital encoding of a short string of characters. Okay, that's key, a short string of characters. I'm, I don't remember how many, 13 or 14 characters, something like that. And encoded in that string of characters would be your call sign, uh, the power that you're running, and your grid locator. And then the receiving station um, only had to receive a small fragment or two of the transmission. If it only received a couple of little bitty short bursts of that transmission, it had enough data to reassemble those 14 character packets. And, and receive the communication. So it was an excellent way to make contact between stations when band conditions were lousy or weak signals or um, through moon bounce, I think was where it initiated. Uh, so that was you know, kind, kind of popular. The problem with those JT modes was the time. Um, it took 50 seconds for a transmission to complete uh, and then you'd have an exchange where you'd go back and forth about three or four times. Um, you'd send a CQ, somebody would send you a, a, an answer in the form of a signal report. You'd send back their signal report, uh, a Roger Roger, and then their signal report, and they'd send back a Roger Roger, and then you'd both send 73. And each one of those transmissions took 50 seconds. So a very, very slow exchange. Also very manual. You had to sit there and wait for the transmission to finish, for his transmission to come in and then click the button for the next part of the exchange and back and forth and back and forth. Uh, what uh, John Taylor, I think it's John Taylor, JT, um, what he did with FT8 was he took that weak signal philosophy, the way that it works, and he shortened the transmission to about 13 seconds um, and also uh, added an automation function. So you could click the auto sequence button. If you heard a station come through, you could click on his call sign, and that was all you needed to do. Your computer would send back his signal report. His computer would send back a Roger and a, your signal report. And both computers would send back and forth a 73 all, automatically. And with transmissions, it only lasted 13 seconds. So with FT8, you can make these weak signal contacts much more quickly and with much less effort. Um, and that has caused it to explode in popularity. Uh, it's hardly used for weak signal work <laughs> anymore. And you know, you know if you've uh, tuned across certain portion of the, FA, uh, or the HF band, uh, you'll hear a cacophony of noise from the dozens of stations that are occupying the uh, FT8 segment, um, just firing off back and forth, clicking their mouse buttons to get log entries. And yeah, that's great, you know, I mean, it's cool. Uh, it, it's, it's not very interesting to me, but that's just me. However, FT8 call um, 
what that program does, okay, they kind of looked at FSQ, I think, or ALE, um, the, the uh, link establishment modes or the message passing um, functionality of, of uh, FSQ. And they built that on top of the FT8 protocol. So using the very robust FT8 um, modulation method and protocol to exchange information, you can type short uh, text messages back and forth. And so it's a communications mode that's built on top of the very robust and reliable FT8 uh, protocol. So that's what FT8 call is. And uh, today we're going to install FT8 call on a Raspberry Pi and I'm going to show you how it works. <clears throat> now, as I said, it is a, uh, well, it's a new one. It's a new program, but it is in development. It's in heavy development. They're working on it right now. It's not finished, but it is usable. And there's already lots of activity on the band. Uh, there we go. So, over on Google uh, Groups I.O., which is the hosting page that they decided to use for the project, there is a uh, FT8 call uh, page. This is where the project lives and there's download links um, and on the page. But to get there you need to log in. So you'll need to create an account on Google, uh, Google Groups I.O. in order to get the software. Not a big deal. I've already created an account. I'm going to go ahead and log in. Once I've logged in, uh, right here on the page it says looking for download links join the group and then head over to the wiki download page which we'll go to and here are the files right here okay they have a Windows 10 version um, they also have desktop Linux here 64-bit uh, oh they've updated that um, app image okay which should be a self-contained program uh, that will run on all the different uh, flavors of Linux. I've tried it. It didn't work. It had some dependency issues. And then they have one here that says uh, Desktop Linux 1804 Deb. I don't know what they're, what they're using there. I've tried to install those on the latest Linux Mint without success. They're, they're requiring some libraries and dependencies that are newer than what's on the latest um, supported release of Linux Mint. Uh, so they might be compiling on the bleeding edge. Um, I, I, well, I'm not going to look at that. I'm, I'm going to look at the uh, Raspbian image here. Okay. So here we've got Raspbian Stretch uh, Deb version 0.0.4.2. You're going to want to go to your Raspberry Pi and you're going to want to go to this page and download that Deb file. So I have a Raspberry Pi running over here, the remote one that I use with my radios, and I have already downloaded that deb file. So we'll go to the file manager, and we'll go to my downloads directory. To install it, we'll right click on it with and select open with package install. And that's going to load the installer. Do you want to install this file? Yeah. And it won't take very long to install. It'll be pretty quick. It's going to ask you for your password. And I typed the wrong password. Okay, and the installation is done. We're ready to go, right? Let's go to the uh, menu here. And we've got our ham radio menu. And it's not there. Where is it? Hmm. All right. Let's uh, let's open a terminal and type uh, FT8 call. Command not found. What's going on? Well, I'll tell you what's going on. <clears throat> now I'm I, I know this is this program is in development, right? It's currently being worked on. Everything is beta. There's bound to be bugs and errors. But the installer itself. Um, it puts the program in a very strange place. Uh, where did it put FT8 call? Don't know. Well, I'll use a Linux command to find out. Okay, so uh, if we use this, find, 
and we're telling find to look in the root and we're telling it to look for a name and the name we're looking for is FT8 call uh, there it is right there slash opt slash WSJTX dash FT8 call slash bin slash FT8 call okay well we know where the program is I don't know why they put it there um, they should have at least created a symbolic link um, back in the bin folder or something to point to it so you'd have some way of finding it I don't know how anybody else uh, you know that doesn't know what they're doing with Linux would be able to use this they'd install it and they wouldn't know where it is and they'd probably give up <laughs> but now that I know where it's at I can copy that full path to the program and I can create a menu entry so I'll come up here and we'll go down to preferences and we'll go to main menu editor and I'll come down here to my ham radio menu and I'll come up here and click new item and we'll put in FT8 call as the name and for the command I will paste in that path I just copied okay okay so now we should have a menu entry and that's how you get it installed so you can launch it and there it is FT8 call and we'll launch the program takes it a moment okay they give you a nice warning box here this version of FT8 call is pre-release development build and will expire on Monday September 3rd uh, I don't know what that means is it gonna quit working <laughs> ah, who knows uh, anyway it says here use it at your own risk you know and then Jordan Shear gives his email here to report any problems and here we are in the program now the layout looks very similar to uh, FSQ and it has a lot of the similar functionality um, it's going to be listening and they've already got some frequencies they've defined up here like we're on 20 meters 14.080 and I can see a signal there in the waterfall and sure enough that was KB1 ZLX uh, giving a signal report to NI5DX and a message see that there's more text that popped up Okay, FT8, as you recall, as you recall from FT8, um, it can only send short strings of characters, like 13 or 14 characters. This uses FT8 for the protocol, so you're limited to 13 to 14 characters. Well, that's not much, but you can type longer messages. What the program will do is it will take your long message and split it up into blocks of 13 or 14 characters and it will send them in three consecutive transmissions and the way that it designates that it's reached the end of the line is it puts a little zigzag lightning bolt sideways zigzag uh, lightning bolt character so if I come down here and I click on this signal over here you'll see it start decoding up here and you can see that was actually his last transmission there's that little lightning bolt zigzag right there so now let's look for somebody else to send something well while we're waiting for that I'll talk about the windows in the program um, this section over here is the uh, band activity section this one on the left uh, that is where all monitored activity pops up in the middle here you've got your receive window and down here your transmit window receive is the text that's directed to your call sign transmit is the window where you put in the stuff that you're going to uh, transmit out obviously uh, down at the bottom you got your waterfall which I can't shrink any further <laughs> over here on the right this window that has all call at the top that's the heard list that's the stations that you you have copied that you've heard in the band segment so right now like it says now NZ1Q <clears throat> it just heard that station um, KB1ZLX was heard two minutes ago 
and then there is information about what they sent or what they were what they were talking about their grid location how far away they are and their signal report right uh, so like nz1q was heard 45 seconds ago he was a plus 07 db very strong and his grid square is fn44 and he's 1187 kilometers away from me there might be a place where i can set that to miles i'll have to dig through the uh, um, preferences um, up here in the upper right we've got six buttons and this is um, this is where things start to get a little interesting okay obviously we're in receive mode tune um, does just what it says it's going to send us a, uh, a signal out so you can tune your antenna spot if that's enabled uh, will upload spots of all the stations that have been copied up to um, APRS Reporter or uh, one of those websites. So you can go to the map and you can see you know what stations you have heard you or what stations you've heard. Auto, that's, we'll, we'll come back to that. That's really interesting. Uh, BCN is beacon. If I, let me pick a frequency area that's clear there and I'll turn that on. Um, that's gonna send out my call sign as a beacon once every 15 minutes every 900 seconds what is that 15 minutes i think i don't know i'm not thinking today um it's just sending it right now yeah the 817 is transmitting at 2.5 watts and it's uh it's sending kb9 rlw beacon in my grid square and it's going to do it twice you can see here in the transmit window down here it put it in there twice Beaconing is kind of like uh, when you throw your call sign out on the repeater. You know, when you pick up your HT, you, you don't know who's out there. Nobody knows who's out there. And you just say, hey, it's KB9RLW listening. Let's everybody else that's, that might be tuned in know that you're there. So if one of them wants to talk to you, they can call you. Um, that's what the beaconing is like. It's going to throw your call sign out there so the people that are out there will hear it or copy it. And they'll know you're there. And maybe they want to talk to you. They can, they can call you directly. Um, log, it maintains a log of, of contacts, uh, similar to WSJTX. Okay, um, over here in the herd list, uh, if I wanted to make contact with somebody, okay, uh, like here, uh, over on the left, you can see W7USR just sent out a beacon, right? If I wanted to contact him, I could right click on his call sign and here under directed, uh, I could choose what I want to do. All right, so I'm going to send him a signal report. And we'll see if he copies me. And if he does, then he'll send me back a signal report. And then we could actually send messages back and forth. Okay, I'm transmitting. And you can see in the transmit window, I'm sending W7USR, signal to noise ratio, negative, second, negative 16. Now, if he copied me, he might send me back a signal report. And then we could actually type messages back and forth. Let's see if he does. Well, while we're waiting for that. Um, the auto button. Uh, there are some automatic commands that you can send that will cause another station to do something. So like, for example, this W7USR station, if I right click on him under directed, uh, there are some commands listed right there in the middle at the top there. A question mark, what is my signal report? An at sign, what is your QTH message? Um, an ampersand, what is your station message and your station power and so on and so on? What stations are you hearing? Uh, there's a bunch of different commands here. If um, you're in auto mode and somebody sends you a command, like the question mark, what's my signal report? Your station is automatically going to send them back a signal report. You don't have to click anything. Uh, that's interesting and it's kind of useful. However, it also allows you to use, at the top of this list, this all call. And what all call does, okay, I was distracted, sorry. What all call does is it sends a message out to all receiving stations. So for example, if I right click on all call and I go to directed, and I select, what is my signal report? Okay, my station is gonna transmit um, that command 
everybody that hears me is going to respond with a signal report. That's kind of interesting um, and kind of cool, but I think only because there's not a lot of stations on this mode yet. I think that's something that could be abused eventually. <laughs> uh, just a minute, let's see what we get here. I just sent out uh, that all call, what's my signal report? And uh, we got a bunch, uh, KB9RLW, uh, KG5TED heard me at negative 13, NZ1Q heard me at negative 03, he heard me pretty well. Uh, KB1ZLX heard me at negative 14, and W7USR, the guy that I uh, sent that message to, heard me at negative 15. So, yeah, that's interesting. But can you imagine, <laughs> can you imagine uh, when this mode gets as popular, if this mode gets as popular as FT8 is now, and there's dozens of stations out there, um, active on this band segment and somebody sends an all call what's my signal report and suddenly dozens of stations throw that back at this could be a mo this could be a thing that gets uh, I, I bet it gets eliminated <laughs> from <laughs> functionality in the future because that could make the cacophony even more ridiculous uh, <laughs> so who knows um, but it is neat uh, I have heard, and I haven't found it yet in the program, that there is a way to relay um, through a station. So let's say that you're trying to contact one station, but you're you're propagating over him, and he's not hearing you. But some other guy over here is hearing you. There's a way to relay through another station to make contact with this one, and then the transmissions flow back in the other direction. So it has some really interesting, um, interesting modes uh, added on to it. And I think it's, it's fascinating. Uh, the ability to just type messages back and forth to each other. Like, uh, for example, N1 or NZ1Q directed. I'm going to send a direct message to him. Hello. How copy Kevin in Fort Wayne. I N. Okay, not a very long message. I'll hit return to send it. Now we should see. There it goes. Sending one of four. So that message was too long to go in one or two packets with FT8. Uh, the program has split it into four packets and it's sending four complete transmissions to send that message to. Uh, NZ1Q. So you'll see the progress here, this yellow button sending 204. I could halt it. I'm going to go ahead and let it finish and see if he answers me. But that's how it works. Um, if he answers me and types a message back and it's too long for one packet, I'll see it popping up here in the yellow box um, one chunk at a time until I see that sideways lightning bolt and then I'll know that it's my turn to talk. So that's how you can use this to actually communicate back and forth. Uh, well, anyway, that is FT8 call. Um, that's how you get it loaded on a Raspberry Pi. And that's how you start playing with it. Uh, check it out. You know, it's, it's interesting. Uh, and I hope to see some more traffic on here. I'm going to play with it a little bit more. Um, but I think some of those features are probably going to be just a bit much, uh, like the all call beacon. Um, when it gets popular. Oh, oh, bugs, bugs, I forgot, bugs. Um, the one really annoying bug for me that they know about and it is going to be addressed is this herd list over here where the stations have been heard at. That will, if nothing is selected down here, that will rebuild itself uh, every few seconds or so. Maybe they fixed that already. I don't think it's doing it now. Nope, there it goes. So like if I wanted to come down here to one I just heard or the recent station, look at that, I couldn't even click on it. I scroll down the list, I come over here, I click on it. Okay, I caught it. <laughs> you have to be really quick because if it rebuilds that list, you're not gonna be able to click on that station. And every time that it hears more traffic, it puts them at the bottom of the list. So it just heard something there, you see, and if I go down there to look at it, the list rebuilds. So that's kind of hard to, uh, to deal with. Uh, so anyway, that's one bug. 
There was another one I discovered. Um, and I can't think of it right now. Well, anyway, it's beta. It's going to be buggy. There are macros, by the way. There's a macros button here. Um, you can add and edit your own macros in there to send quick messages with just a button. Uh, QTH button, same deal. A CQ button loads a CQ, so you can edit any of those. I think that's all that I need to mention right now. Yeah, okay, anyway. Sorry, I was, I was rambling a bit on this video. I've been a bit distracted. I've got a lot going on. Uh, speaking of that, um, I'm going to be making a fairly major announcement on the channel coming up uh, in a week or so. Um, things are changing for the better, I think, I hope. Uh, and uh, yeah, watch for that. But during these coming weeks, I'm going to be extremely busy here and very stressed out. So videos are not going to be as often as they have been in the past. Uh, maybe only one a week for a little while. And you'll see why when that big announcement comes maybe next week, maybe towards the end of next week. We'll see how things go. So until next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.